Hey there, everybody. Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast here again with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. As always, Abolitionist Abstractions is covered by the BIPCOT no-gov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So this week, I want to discuss something that I had seen uh, floating around some social media sites. Uh, I think it started uh, maybe on LinkedIn, um, and I think I might have found the article in a couple other places too. Um, And this also ties into something that was uh, requested uh, through the Seeds of Liberty uh, page uh, regarding what to do uh, in terms of dealing with the law and the officers of said law when it comes to traffic violations. Um, The discussion that led to that being brought up uh, was regarding uh, my continued uh, insistence that people consider opting out of the system in as many ways as possible. Um, And the article that was posted on LinkedIn um, and in other areas uh, was titled U.S. Supreme Court uh, rules or something of that nature, I'm paraphrasing, uh, that a driver's license is not necessary f- to travel freely. Um, and a friend of mine that I have met uh, through Facebook uh, over, over a couple of years ago, actually, uh, who is kind of in the uh, sovereign citizen uh, camp, Uh, Although he does not refer to himself as such, um, as I think we've discussed previously, uh, the term sovereign citizen is an oxymoron because you cannot be both sovereign, uh, meaning your own ruler, um, and a citizen uh, at the same time. But he is somebody who has followed a lot of the same paths that those type of people have um, with uh, success. Uh, he had actually been the one who introduced me to this, and I saw that after this article got post, started getting posted on social media, uh, he put a post of it out stating that uh, it was other people using his methods or the methods that, that had been taught to him, at least. Um, and I can confirm that because I got a hold of the same listing of Supreme Court and lower court decisions. Uh, you know, there's like 20 plus, I think, of them. Uh, all stating in some form or another that the right to travel freely is uh, is a natural right of the so-called citizens and it should not be impeded by government in any way. Um, there are plenty of people who have uh, debunked this supposedly by stating that the information is being cherry-picked um, from these decisions um, or opinions rather and that there are more, you know, there's more information to that that's being purposely, purposefully left out. Um, in either case, uh, I think, for me at least, uh, it, it's kind of irrelevant because that's giving legitimacy to the system, no matter how you slice it. If you want to believe that uh, it is uh, being cher- the information is being cherry picked, or whether you believe that the information can be used to help you. Um, stay out of the clutches of the state, uh, it is still giving the, the state legitimacy by paying attention to it in either way, uh, in either case, rather. So, but this, uh, this, this guy I know, <laughs> I know a guy, <laughs> um, but I, I have also come across plenty of other people who have done the same, you know, followed the same path and argued these things in court. And the basic premise is that, you know, because of these rulings, uh, it states that you don't actually need a driver's license. And this is just another one of these permits, certificates, licenses, uh, you know, that people are told you need in order to function, um, but it really is just a revenue generation scam for the state. Um, uh, this, <clears throat> If you travel down this rabbit hole, you can also go a little deeper and get into the legalese uh, by u- using stuff like Black's Law Dictionary, uh, which if you, if you read the law dictionaries and check with the language of the time in when specific laws or regulations what have you, were written, uh, you will often find that 
everyday words that people use and assume mean one thing because, well, that's what it says in the dictionary <laughs> um, and that's what they've been taught. Um, but in legalese, these same terms have often completely different meanings. So there is the line of reasoning, shall we say, that uh, the term driver is actually means something completely different when it comes to the um, matters of law. Um, now this actually, uh, I, I did check into, uh, when I was still a constitutionalist and was slowly transitioning to anarchism, but still, uh, you know, my, my attachment to minarchism was in its death throes, um, but I still would not, uh, relinquish it altogether. Um, so I traveled down this path a little bit and I, I looked into these things and I read a, a ton of stuff. Um, like I said, I've, I've met some people over the past few years that have done this, uh, to some extent or another. Um, you know, opting out of the system this way by using the system. Um, so I've, I did find, for instance, here in New York, that they actually had changed the definition of driver at some point, um, or at least they eradicated the fact that it does not pertain to anybody who is not a taxi driver, for instance, because driver in the original sense when the laws were written uh, meant somebody who used their vehicle, um, and at that point it was even, I think, horse-drawn carriages counted, um, used their vehicle uh, to transport people for money. So taxi drivers, limo drivers, um, you know, any anybody of that sort, bus drivers, um, anybody who takes in money uh, for transporting people from one location to another, that was considered a driver. Um, everybody else was simply traveling. Uh, even if they were using their vehicle. Um, and as far as I could find, uh, at some point uh, here in New York, they altered the, um, amended the Constitution in some way, or not even the Constitution, they, you know, a footnote to a footnote to a footnote where they clarify the definition um, of driver, but they kind of erase the fact that it used to say something else, and now it, 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 it claims to apply to everybody who uses a motor vehicle for any purpose. Um, so, but this tactic of using this, you know, this type of, these type of uh, decisions and opinions and precedent from different courts um, stating that you don't actually need a license unless you are one of these people has been used successfully uh, in certain cases. Uh, the friend of mine who first turned me on to this uh, claims that he is aware of people in at least 23 states who have been successful using this defense uh, when you know they eventually were dragged into traffic court over different violations and they were able to get everything uh, dismissed based on the evidence that they didn't actually need a driver's license, which meant that any of the laws that were attached to uh, following um, along to keep your driver's license uh, were actually not applic applicable to them. Um, so there are people that have used this defense and supposedly it has been successful. Now, I have read up on some of these cases and it appears that it was. Um, but those precedents, of course, are never used again because in other instances, they are completely laughed out of court, um, dismissed as frivolous, um, which leads me to believe that there may be some validity to it and the more in-the-know judges uh, have caught wind of this and are trying to you know, stamp it out before too many people catch wind because, well... If enough people understand this and start saying, well, hey, I don't actually need a license, so none of your silly laws apply to me, um, and as long as I am not uh, aggressing against anyone in my driving, um, as long as I am not, you know, causing accidents, being reckless to the point where I am and con constantly endangering other people, as long as I am just traveling along my way and not hurting anybody, then... I don't have to pay attention to your laws. Um, if enough people started doing this, ooh, the system would start crashing in a hurry, um, especially like places here in New York where revenue generation is a big deal, um, as it is in most places, but, you know, we like to do things bigger and better in the Empire State, uh, very aptly named, <laughs> as I was, it was recently pointed out to me. Uh, I never really thought of it that way, but yes, we are an empire here. Um, 
So if you take away the ability to g generate revenue in this manner, ooh, what are the cops going to do? Uh, what are they going to do with themselves? Uh, I'm sure the government will find other functions for him, even if this type of thing was successful, um, because it's not like they ever fire cops because they don't ha they have too many to enforce the laws that are there. They'll just find other things to harass people over. Um, but you can't really see that happening. Um, it would take a large scale movement of people just rejecting this. Um, it, you know, otherwise they're just going to continue to clamp down on the people that still do pay attention, or still do believe that the system works rather, um, and that it's legitimate, <laughs> and that they have to pay these tickets. So. I, I thought it was interesting that this thing started making the rounds lately, um, and I saw it picked up in a lot of different social media groups and a lot of people reposting it and asking for the validity. Um, I am personally of the opinion that, like I said, it, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter whether it is legitimate or not, um, because I try to live my life as freely as possible anyway. Now, I have discussed this with other people, uh, especially recently. If and when the uh, local government here in, in my section of New York decides to f drag me into court over matters pertaining to this, um, I fully intend to use this defense and any other one I can find, um, even starting with is early, earlier in the process with, uh, say, the Mark Stevens type defense with, can you even prove your jurisdiction over me? Um, you know, I'll pull out all the stops uh, if and when they finally drag me in. Um, as I've mentioned before on the Seeds podcast, I think, and uh, possibly in another one of these uh, episodes, uh, I've been in uh, constant battle with the uh, local, with the county <laughs> that I live in uh, over traffic issues uh, for well over a year now. I've kind of been dodging them. Um, I've tried a bunch of different methods. Uh, one ticket I received uh, or for an alleged offense that... Uh, they never actually had much proof that I had committed um, one of those uh, red light camera tickets. Uh, I tried the defense that was floating around on the Free Thought Project uh, a couple of, uh, last year or two years ago. Uh, somebody in DC, I believe, had used the defense that uh, you know it's you know following along with of, to what the Constitution is supposed to say that. Uh, you know, these, these type of cameras uh, eliminate uh, due process because you are just targeting a person just because you claim that they were in their vehicle at the time because you have a picture of their vehicle, um, but there's never any evidence that it's actually you driving the car and you just assume that it's you driving the car and that you automatically must be guilty of the infraction uh, totally nullifies what due process is supposed to mean. Um, and there were some other things in there too um, about saving the taxpayers money because of this because since you can't actually provide unless you can provide more proof that you know for instance I was the one driving the vehicle at the time that it's actually wasting the taxpayers money because the burden of proof is on the state um, not on the so-called defendant uh, because well the whole innocent before you know until proven guilty thing so it's supposed to be in their court to to handle the burden of proof. Although in most situations, at least I know here in New York, they try to turn the tables on on you, um, and most people don't even don't really understand what's being what's being done to them. And especially here in Nassau County, they love to make plea bargains. Uh, they love to, you know, somebody will go into traffic court with a bunch of tickets for a bunch of different reasons. And they'll say, well, here's what we can do. We can knock it all the way, you know, because it's all about points on your license. And if, uh, if you rack up too many points, they'll, they'll suspend your license and then you can't drive anymore. We'll get to more about that later. Um, but they are always willing to make a deal and you know we'll knock the points down to this and we'll change this speeding to a seat belt and everything they can do to make you feel like you're winning because they'll knock your points down which will also because of the way the system is set up and you're required by law to have a driver's license supposedly um, the insurance companies think that they must follow that too so they are tied into the system and you get so many points on your license and it, it could cause your insurance to go up. 
Um, it's all it's all a big racket in that way. Um, I am not against insurance per se. Um, in a free society, I still believe that there would be insurance companies, um, and they may or may not have some connection to the pe- the owners of the roads at that time. But uh, I cannot see it being this you know monopolized system that it is now. Um, so as with everything else, you take out the expensive middleman and the ridiculous regulations and the cost will go down um, and it'll be more efficient for everybody who wishes to have insurance. So in that situation, I would still have insurance. Currently, I still do because it's wealthy law um, and uh, I try to get hassled as least amount as possible. Um, but it's something that's forced upon you now. You're you know, supposedly not allowed to drive without insurance, which is kind of ridiculous because if you want to be, if you want the opportunity, the option to pay out of pocket, should you cause any damage, then that should be your choice. But they want to be able to cut you deals uh, in the court system because all they really want is the money. They'll knock all these points down to supposedly save you money on your insurance and, uh, you know, keep your license valid for longer, but they'll still charge you the same amount basically. And between the charge of the tickets itself, I mean, I think seatbelt tickets are up to like $180 these days, which is just insane. Um, especially cause the last one I got a couple of years ago, there was literally nobody else on the road. Uh, it was just me at a three way intersection and a cop hiding off one of the one of those side roads um and there's nobody else around and i still got a 180 dollars ticket because i didn't stop long enough to make the officer happy um and then there's surcharges um so that ticket i think ended up being 220 dollars or something just insane so all they want is the money so here in nassau county they love to make a deal with you and most people think this is a good thing because this is what they've been led to believe but honestly uh, you know, my license was supposedly suspended back in January. Um, then I got another notice that it was suspended again somehow, uh, <laughs> double suspension, I guess, uh, as of like March or April. Uh, and then in the middle of June, uh, which we talked about on the Sea Celebrity podcast at one point, uh, I got, I got pulled over again. <laughs> um, and this time for a seatbelt violation during, or actually the end of June, cause it was quota time and it was click it or ticket week, which the cop proudly told me it was and you know offered me some advice that maybe I should think about wearing my seatbelt during the next week because it was click it or ticket week and uh, as we discussed in that one episode I ended up getting into asking him if he'd be willing to have a conversation with me and I chatted a little bit with him and basically uh, got him thinking about the fact that you know him ticketing people for what could happen has a lot of striking similarities to say the movie Minor- Minority Report uh, Report uh, with thought crimes. And, uh, I walked, you know, I let him walk away at that point so he could chew on that for a while. But I, you know, received the ticket from that day and I wasn't any problems with my supposed suspended license. So I don't know if they're just so backlogged that they somehow miss this. (laughs) Um, or if it's just, you know, more threatening BS from the state that never actually came to pass. Um, but in either case, I, I try to drive relatively carefully to keep their uh, keep them away from me, um, so I don't have to deal with the extra hassle. Um, but you know, if my license is indeed suspended, okay, I don't really want it anymore anyway because I am willing to test these theories out that you don't actually need it, um, and I encourage others to think about doing the same. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people that have, haven't had licenses for 10 plus years and have never had an issue. Um, and most of them will say that it actually causes you to drive even safer than you normally would because you don't want the hassle. And if they, you know, if they have no reason to bother you, um, and you're extra careful around the quota times, then, uh, you know, you could go about your, your business on a, you know, and travel. You know, I even know a few people who managed to keep their insurance valid for years after their license just failed to be valid anymore in the eyes of the state and uh, didn't have a problem that way either. You know, like I said, if I run into that issue when my, because uh, my, I don't think I'm up for renewal because <laughs> they don't actually let you cancel it. You know, I actually looked into that at one point. I wanted to rescind my driver's license and, uh, they didn't really make that easy. So I have to wait till 2019 for it to expire. And I have no intention on, uh, renewing it at that point. And, uh, hopefully I'll actually be out of New York by then, but no matter where you are, 
you know the whole point of this uh, this talk was what you can do and you know how you can deal with these situations well as with other forms of activism as i've discussed before it's really a matter of how much you're willing to put up with and how much you're willing to risk um, you know how much hassle you're willing to invite into your life you know for me um, a lot of people especially the people close to me who are, are still uh, not fully on this side of the anarchist fence uh, think i'm a little crazy for pushing the issue because i do spend a lot of time on the roads with my business um, so I'm a, I'm a much more readily available target. Um, but, you know, this is another one of those things that, uh, I, I think it's a matter of principle. I should be able to travel freely wherever I so choose, um, as long as I am not causing any harm to anyone. Um, I, ob I obey most basic traffic laws out of common courtesy and for safety of the other people on the road and of course more importantly myself and my canine friends that are usually traveling with me um, or if i'm driving with my kids in the car even more so <laughs> um, so i don't drive like a maniac um, you know i may not obey with the speed limits at all times but most people don't um, and, you know i may ro roll through a stop sign or ignore a no turn on red when there's clearly nobody coming for miles but again, I'm not aggressing against anybody. I am just violating some arbitrary edict um, that was sold as a safety measure that is, has nothing to do with safety whatsoever other than in name, and it's just purely revenue generation. So, like I said, I, I drive relatively carefully, and uh, you know, I'm willing to deal with the consequences. I um, am accepting my responsibility in this. I am willing, you know, I will stay out of their clutches as long as I can, but if and when they finally decide to drag me in uh, and force the issue, then I will pull out every tactic I possibly can. Uh, I have also let it be known, and I'll let it be known here too, in case any of uh, my government friends are watching, um, regardless of what your rules and regulations of this ridiculous traffic courts here may say, I will find a way to live stream the entire event. Um, you know, here in New York, uh, cameras are not allowed <laughs> um, in the courtroom a lot of times, but uh, I just don't care. Um, I will make sure that I have the audience planted with enough people, um, and I will find every which way to make sure this thing is recorded, and then it gets out there. Um, and it's not a matter of whether I win or not against the state, but it's to expose the bullshit. Um, because uh, I want to be able to attempt to use all the different tactics I find, no matter how crazy they may seem or frivolous, um, the court may deem them, uh, because if worded correctly and the contradictions are pointed out clearly enough and then it still gets shot down, um, that'll just be further proof of how illegitimate the system is, and that's my goal. Um, you know, am I taking risks with this? Absolutely. Uh, does my wife wish I wouldn't? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but again, this comes down to me being able to look my kids in the eye uh, in a few years when they get a little older and say, listen, daddy's really trying to do everything he possibly can to make this world freer for you. Um, and if it takes him having to deal with the hassle of the state uh, to make a point, um, to hopefully wake some more people, especially in our family up, well, then I'm willing to do that. Not everybody is. I don't expect everybody to. I don't even really blame people who just can't bring themselves to do so because um, they're too worried about what might happen. Um, but there needs to be some of us out there trying this stuff. There needs to be some of us out there pushing the limits and saying, we're just not going to take this anymore. So that's me. I'm one of those guys. And uh, hey, We'll see how it goes. But so that's, you know, that's how I deal with the traffic situations. That's why, you know, like I said, that, that article that, that popped up and has been circulating is, is interesting. And it's, it's something I think people should consider looking into. And even if some of the, you know, so-called debunkers are right and that, you know, I've, I've looked into, especially it's the, oh, the main one is a Supreme Court one. I think it's Thompson versus, or somebody versus Thompson. I don't remember exactly. Uh, Thompson v. something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those cases. Um, I've read through the rest of the opinion, and it's almost amb ambiguous 
um, you know, the section that's been that's been carved out and, and people try to use as a defense is pretty clear as day, but it does get a little wishy-washy after that. Um, but, you know, my stand still is that it's not a constitutional issue. It's not a matter of that. It's just a natural right to be able to travel freely um, in order to uh, improve your time, intellect, and labor, um, and ultimately your happiness um, to travel freely as long as you're not aggressing against anybody, as long as, you know, you're not injuring another party and then not paying restitution of any kind uh, for the injuries occur you know, in incurred. So if you want to try this stuff out, if you want to stop being harassed, well, then, you know, I encourage everybody to uh, start researching this stuff. Look into the supposed laws in your state and, you know, see how far you can push things. Uh, you know, I also, of course, advise everybody to uh, be recording all, all interactions with cops at all times, but that should go without saying at this point. Um, I myself make sure I have at, le at least two recording devices on me at all times. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, even, you know, depending again with, with, with your laws in your state, because some states actually try to make it a wiretapping issue if you record the cops, which is just ridiculous because, again, if we're supposed to believe any of the nonsense, they're a public service servant in a public area um, in their official capacity, so they should have no expectation of privacy whatsoever, regardless of what any BS laws um, that particular area comes up with. But that's something else you may have to overcome. But you know, like I said, I, I, I just travel freely. Um, I, I've, been, I've been dodging certain issues, and like I said, I, I, try, I tried. I really did. Uh, I sent different letters in, requesting them to dismiss things, and I be, at, at the behest of the taxpayers, that was my whole line, um, and they still rejected me. Uh, another one I actually showed up for court for, but that was because they sent me a ro an erroneous date um, well, apparently they sent it to a lot of people um, because they scheduled a, a, a bunch of us for election day, which of course they're closed on. And I had a pretty good idea that they were closed on, but hey, that was the date they gave me. So I showed up and there was about 50 other people out there uh, all looking confused because the doors were locked. And I ki calmly explained to all of them what, what had happened and that there was an error. Um, and that it actually it ended up giving me a great opportunity to give a little uh, sermon because <laughs> um, a couple people started to get interested in, in what I was talking about is using my defense that day because I was going to try the constitutional route just because, well, they had kind of caught me and I was going to have to go into court anyway or risk having a warrant put out on me. So I figured I'd give it a shot um, and I got a lot of people interested in it. And uh, then I got to expand even further and, and talk a little bit more about volunteerism and uh, the possibility of not needing a license at all. So I got to talk to, uh, you know, a, a decent group, sized group of people. Um, but again, because the state screwed up, um, I was still punished. <laughs> and supposedly that's what one of my suspensions was about because I failed to show up. And even though I sent them repeated letters, tried calling and explaining, um, their claim was that there was a mistake and it had been rectified and everybody had been sent another letter uh, stating that there was a new date and when I asked them, then how is it possible that 50 of us showed up uh, on the wrong date? Um, they didn't have a very good answer. Um, so they're just continually dodging, hoping that I'll eventually cave. But not going to do so. Um, I'm just going to keep going out there driving. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see where it goes. So I, uh, like I said, it's not for everybody. Um, but if you think about it logically, other than a test to prove your efficacy at driving, um, there's no need to have a license, you know? I mean, sure, in a free society, there may still be some sort of system like this, but it will most likely not be monopolized. Um, it won't be, uh, you know, there won't be pure revenue generation. Um, because the only thing that would be necessary is to maintain the roads uh, and which will most likely be all private <laughs> um, and uh, provide basic safety. 
Um, you know, so arbitrary speed limits that have been set for 50 plus years and have never bothered to budge despite all the technological advancements in cars and the safety measures um, will be a thing of the past. Um, idiotic tickets for turning red, uh, turning right on red in the middle of the night when there's nobody else around will be a thing of the past. You know, I mean, sure, there might still be speeding tickets for excessive speeding if you're putting other people in danger or you may be banned from a private road altogether. Um, but that's still much more preferable to everybody being held to the same standard, regardless of their ability to drive, regardless of how they can handle a car at higher speeds, regardless of whether there's other people on the road or not. Just like with everything else in government, one size does not fit all and we should not be treated as such because we're individuals. Um, so you can, you know, you can try these things out. You can, uh, you can read up for yourself. You know, you can find that LinkedIn article about, uh, which I'll, 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 I'll post in the show notes, um, and, and read through it and look at the, you know, look at the supposed, uh, decisions and, and precedents set. Um, and then if you want to dig further, go find the, the entire, uh, opinion and read up more. Um, check out Black's Law's dictionary and, uh, see what driver actually means. Um, you know, and then think about government in general and what it is that they demand people to have permits and, and, and certificates and, uh, you know, permission slips, basically, uh, for pretty much everything. And uh, you start to get the picture that, well, maybe this driver's license thing isn't all it's cracked up to be either. So, like I said, there's, uh, there's ways you can get around this stuff. Um, and... If you're up for it, I highly encourage people to give it a try. Um, because as with everything else, the more people we get involved, not just bucking the system for the sake of bucking the system, but for a, you know, a, a long-term goal. Because the more people that opt out in a certain area, it becomes impossible to enforce. Um, because the individuals, the so-called citizenry, will always outnumber the agents of government. And it is only through the horizontal enforcement of the citizens that worship the state in some capacity that I truly believe are not mad that other people aren't following the laws. I believe they're jealous that other people aren't following the laws and they get away with it. Um, and these people think they can't. Even the laws that have no victim attached and uh, you're not really getting away with anything other than uh, pissing off the state for ignoring their ridiculously arbitrary edict. Um, so without those people, the system on the whole could collapse in a hurry um, because the quickest way to make a bad law get repealed is to make it unenforceable and you do not have to be you do not have to act aggressively in order to make that happen uh, it's all about you know mass non-compliance um, you can call it civil disobedience but uh <laughs> not really considered civil some of the things that uh, i prefer to do um you know because most people assume you have to do these things but just not you know don't comply simple as that and uh the more people that do that the quicker we'll, head, we'll get towards freedom. So I think that's about all I had today. Uh, I hope uh, I made some kind of sense. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. Uh, you can find out information about this show and all the other stuff that we do at theseedsofliberty.com. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace.